This simple and marvelous toy works principally due to Bernoulli's theorem. Without going into the formulae, the essence of Bernoulli's theorem is that the speed at which any fluid, that is a gas or a liquid, moves is inversely proportional to the pressure within that fluid. In other words, the faster a fluid moves, the lower the pressure. In the case of this toy, we use two straw pieces attached to a piece of foam such that one of the pieces partially blocks the opening of the other. Hence, when you blow through the half-blocked straw, the air comes out at a much faster velocity from the half-blocked end, thereby reducing the air pressure at that location and hence literally sucking up the water from the unblocked straw. This activity gives great scope for experimentation and exploration. Some very quick and simple observations one could make are the following. Blow and suck from each straw while the other is immersed in water. During which scenario does the spray come out? Why? Is it possible to also lift the water up by sucking from either of the straws? If so, from which one? Is there a spray here too? Or does the water enter your mouth? You can measure the length of the unblocked straw. Then put two teaspoons of water, which is about 10 milliliters, in a tablespoon and place the unblocked straw in it. Measure the time it takes to empty the spoon of all its water as a spray while you blow as hard as you can through the half-blocked straw. The same set of observations could be asked for a series of possible variations that can be made. Examples of some of these variations include making the same toy with longer straws, conducting the same activity with straws at different angles, that is acute and obtuse, you can make it a two-in-one toy by inserting a skewer into the foam piece such that it bisects the angle between the straws. This exactly mimics one of our other activities, which is the sprinkler model. Further, you can make it a three-in-one toy by making one of the straws whistle. Refer to our sound over activity for details of this. Make the same toy with straws of different stiffness and or gauge. For example, use fat straws or a combination of fat and thin straws. Make the same toy with used pens as sketch pens or even PVC pipes. Mount this mist toy on a small bottle so that you can carry it around with you safely without worrying about spilling the water. This model can also be used as a spray for herbal pesticide. And this is how we administer herbal pesticide in our activity bearing the same name.
or much like the garden pipe analogy given earlier. The atmospheric pressure, the weight of the air in the atmosphere is acting all around us all the time. A slight change in this pressure at any location causes a dynamic system. Fluids flow from a region of high pressure to low pressure. We refer to storms and cyclones as low pressure areas or depressions because the atmospheric pressure at these locations actually reduces, thereby driving wind and weather systems. Bernoulli's theorem, by creating a high velocity stream of air, we are reducing the pressure at that location, whereas the surrounding atmospheric pressure, acting down on the water for example, is the same as it was earlier. The air from the unblocked straw experiences a lower pressure above it and streams out of the unblocked straw. The water in the cup takes its place and continues to spray out of the unblocked submerged straw. It is split into fine droplets like a spray as the wind from the block straw continues to blow out. A detailed look at Bernoulli's equation impresses upon us that other forces also play a role in fluid flow, which is why most explanations of Bernoulli's principle will ask you to consider horizontal flow so that the gravitational potential at all points throughout the flowing fluid are the same, ignore the effects of viscosity, which is fluid friction, and require straight laminar flow, that is without any turbulence and vortices in the fluid. In the real world, these ideal conditions are rarely experienced. However, for the purposes of our experiment and many a demonstration, these ideal conditions are a good approximation of the reality. In our case, the straw we are blowing through is horizontal. Over the length of the blowing straw, the air would encounter minimal friction. And given the diameter of the straw, there is not much scope for swirling and vortices within the flow. Eventually, it is the sudden decrease of the cross-sectional area, the constriction, that causes an increase in the speed and reduction of pressure in the air, right at the junction of the straws. Bernoulli's theorem is also a principle that is ripe with misconceptions and false classroom demonstrations. One has to always keep in mind that we are talking about an enclosed single laminar flow for fluid when explaining the theorem. Any demonstration that shows a paper being uplifted by blowing over it, note that the paper lifts up even when you blow under it, is a misleading interpretation of Bernoulli's principle. It is a sudden change of speed within a flowing fluid, usually caused by a constriction or widening of the flow channel that would be required to demonstrate Bernoulli's principle. The suspension of a ball above a fast-flowing stream of air is also often shown as a demonstration of the principle. This too is largely misleading, all the part of the reason the ball stays up may be due to Bernoulli's principle. However, it is other turbulent airflow forces that perhaps play a larger role here. Some truer classic examples of the principle are given in the next section. It may also be counterintuitive to some that an increase of speed results in a decrease of pressure. For when a fast stream of air or water hits a surface, or your body for example, we distinctly feel an increased pressure. This is true, but a completely different aspect to what we are talking about. If you try to block a fast stream of air or water, you are applying force to do so. Since the fast stream is falling on a small area, the pressure is very high. This is the pressure parallel to the flow of the fluid. It is the external pressure imparted due to the momentum of the fluid. However, Bernoulli's theorem refers to the internal pressure of the fluid, that is, the pressure encountered within the fluid or say on the walls of the straw or the pipe it is flowing through. This is a pressure acting equally in all directions imparted by the fluid and is not the same as the unidirectional pressure imparted upon impact of a flowing fluid when it encounters a surface or obstacle. Some applications. One of the reasons planes fly is because of Bernoulli's principle. The wings are shaped thus, known as an aerofoil, such that the distance air has to travel above the wings is more than what it has to travel below the wing. Hence, the air on the top of the wing moves faster than that below, causing a pressure differential, that is, lower pressure above the wing and higher pressure below the wing, thereby allowing the plane to lift off. Physical upthrust based on how a plane flies and is built is also responsible for flight, but Bernoulli's is also prevalent which is why the plane needs to reach a certain speed before it can lift off. Amazingly, a cricket ball also swings, known as contrast swing, thanks to Bernoulli's principle, as a rougher side has a longer path length 
and so the air moves faster on the rougher side, causing a ball to swing towards that side. Now you know why cricketers spend so much time trying to shine one side of the ball and also occasionally indulge in foul play by trying to rough up the other. Calendar movement on the wall when a ceiling fan is switched on. Requirement to stay away from a fast moving train when on a platform because you might get sucked in otherwise. Blowing at a chula through a pipe. Some rural children may relate to this or if you ask your grandmom, she may tell you that's how she used to keep the fire going for the chula. We do this from a distance instead of keeping it close to the mouth. This allows surrounding air to also enter the pipe and hence oxygenate the fire further. We can also fill our Bernoulli bag by cheating in the lung capacity activity by using the same method. Major storms are often referred to as low pressure systems or depressions because the atmospheric air pressure is reduced thanks to the effects such as land heating faster than the sea or dramatic heating of the sea surface and the result is an increase in air speeds. We hope that you have enjoyed seeing this video but more importantly reveled in playing with this wonderfully simple and impressive toy. It is a tactivity that has enormous scope for exploration as shown earlier, a lot of intricate and interesting science involved and a great deal of fun to play with. Given that you have actually pumped up water using this device, you may call it your own Bernoulli pump. We are sure you'll enjoy giving people a shower or playing holy with this toy or perhaps even use it as a hairspray before a haircut, not to mention for a fair deal of spray painting. Nevertheless, we hope you appreciate how ubiquitous flowing fluids are, what the various applications of Bernoulli's principle in our day-to-day -day lives encompass, and how certain misconceptions and counterintuitive phenomena also exist in trying to explain this very important but rather nuanced principle. Perhaps by playing and exploring with this activity more and trying to discover for yourself various examples and analogies that describe the phenomenon better, you yourself will become an expert on a principle detailed so beautifully by two Swiss men nearly 300 years ago. Goodbye.